Okay, so here we go. The first time firing the application. I'm kind of hoping that if we hit this button, we'll see the products. Let's go for it. Yes, there we go. First off, fantastic. It's made that database query. And we can see here, here's all of the data from the database. Now, um, let's perhaps try changing one of these database values. So let's uh, let's change this then to 16, kind of keep in keeping with the test that we've been doing. So let's head back over to uh, our products table. Let's make this change. Let's, let's say this is going to be 16. Now, if I go back here, Let's hit the get change product from Superbase and then it's been updated to 16. Now, just to prove that this is actually working, there's a little thing that we can do here. So let's go back to the change tracker. Let's very horribly change this then to, uh, in fact, let me change the product first. Let's move this back to then say 15 like that. Now that's going to change this value here. If I just refresh this, there we go. You just changed it there. So let's um, let's just set this back maybe to about three, uh, you know, three or four minutes before then. So let's just change that. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean, need to press enter there. There we go. So change it back now. We know that we just changed this now to 15, and what I'm hoping is that we know we will not see this change to 15, then we know that our logic is kind of playing out. Okay, let's hit this. There we go. We're not seeing that data. So definitely our time tracking is all working and we're not seeing then a load of brand new rows or at least the deletion of all of our rows and then a reinsertion of the rows from Superbase. So it's definitely proven that things are looking pretty good. I'm just going to set that back here just before I uh, carry on. Otherwise, we're going to have something that's not going to be particularly consistent. Uh, with our application there we go let's go to the products let's just change this then maybe let's just change it to 14 something like that let's go back here go back the right way here let's just get the product again i should see 14 come in now there it is so good all of our logic is all playing out it's a good little test and um, there's still some further work we need to do in our application because we need to kind of handle the situation where our application kind of fires up for the very very first time so let's move back into flutterflow and let's now start working on that part of the application Okay then, so let's next look at what happens when the application first loads. So in this, in this particular test, what I've done is I've actually deleted the application from the iOS simulator. So we can kind of show this kind of operating right off the bat when it first loads on a device. So I'm just gonna go up here. I'm just gonna do the regular kind of test here as we're using the kind of the local uh, run version of Flutterflow. That's now gonna go away and do a build. And then let's then head over to the simulator to kind of see what we're now presented with and then we can see how we're going to resolve this particular problem in in a very very short moment so here it comes the application's loading up and we're not presented with any data now kind of what i wanted from this application is to kind of make that initial call we want to get that data populated into our database so what we need to do is we need to create some actions with inside the action flow editor for the actual page load so when the kind of the application fires up so let's now head over to flutterflow and let's now start completing this application by adding in these additional checks so let's start then creating the app state variable that we're going to need. And this one is going to be called is first run. So just go to add app state variable. Let's call this is first run here like that. Now this is going to be of type Boolean and we're going to persist it. We're going to always going to want to store the value of it on every time our application fires up. Hit create there. And we just need to set it to be true by default because this is kind of like the first time that runs that will be true. And then we'll set it to false as the actions play out. And I'll show you that in just a second. Now that is there, move back over to the widget tree, go to the home page, move over to the actions here and open up the action flow editor. Now, don't worry about this debt set dark mode. This is just part of the project that I've got here. That's going to, you can see probably when I've been running this, it's been dark by default. So just hit the plus here. Let's add a conditional in. And the condition that we're checking against is the page, state, sorry, the app state variable here. And this is first run. So we know it's going to be true by default. So we're going to head in this particular direction. So as it's true, we're going to want to refresh our data and this is why it's great to create reusable kind of actions is because quite simply I don't need to redefine all of those actions here I can just call out to that page level action block so hit plus go to add action and you can see here to the convenience it says refresh products so just select that I don't need to do anything more here we're going to get those products refreshed and I'm going to go to then the plus here go to add action and I just simply want to set that is a first run here back to 
then it's a false value. So just say is first run. And quite simply, all I need to do is here, I can just toggle the value. It's already true. We're going to toggle it back to false. That is all that we need to do there. And just hit close. And that hopefully will mean if I now delete the app in the simulator, let's fire it up. I'm kind of hoping we're going to see all of the data come in straight away. So I'm going to go and do that and then I'll fire it up and we'll come right back into then the, uh, the test mode. Okay, here we go. Fingers crossed we see some data. Yes, there we go. Excellent. So data's now loaded. Wow, I think we are pretty well much there in this particular example. That's just how we expect it to be. Um, we've already kind of tested it, I think, from a from a refresh perspective. I don't need to kind of do that again. But um, well, there we go. Hopefully you found this particular set of uh, videos really, really useful. Um, we cover a lot of ground, actually. We cover a lot, a lot of kind of some of the, the key things that you typically might do in Flutterflow and uh, using kind of, you know, action blocks and all that kind of stuff and using SQL, Light and Superbase together. So I'm um, hopefully you've got some good value from these videos. So of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've really enjoyed it. And of course, if you're not a member of the Academy, please do come and visit the Academy and uh, check out all of the content we've got on there as well. It'd be great to see you there as a member. But if not, then please do stick around on YouTube. There's always content that goes up on YouTube, but um, there's a great community there on the Digital Pros and No Code Academy. And one thing I really do appreciate, of course, is if you hit a thumbs up on this video because that hopefully gets this type of content out to the masses as well and of course i'll be coming uh, with more content on superbase and sqlite and flutterflow and all kinds of different uh, uh sort of tools and technologies in the uh, in the no code space so please do continue to follow my content so until the next video i'll see you soon